Good evening, friends. Uh, we're kind of changing things up a little bit. Uh, we are going to play uh, a little bit of, of the One Ring, second edition. Uh, I'm using the first edition adventure written by Jacob Rogers, which is a brilliant adventure to show players everything that they need to know. Okay, so the, the plan is to um, spell Toward Eternity with the One Ring 2nd Edition. Uh, I love the 1st Edition stuff from uh, Cubicle 7 and Sophisticated Games, uh, but Sophisticated Games decided to turn everything over to um, uh, Free League, and they just released 2nd Edition. I have a copy of the main book, and uh, we're going to be playing through some stuff. This is the first time that I've played through a lot of the changes in the main book uh, for 2nd Edition, and so not only will my players be learning Learning, but I will too. If you have any questions, any curiosity about anything in the game? What are the clouds across the map? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> that is from a, a, a module that I was able to add. I've got birds here too, um, but they're kind of few what? and far between. Yeah, there's birds flying on here. Yeah, I've seen this before. Yep. I love this mod. Oh, that's cool! I need, that, I need the name of that module so I can play with it. Uh, hang on. And I can get you, let's see, manage modules. Uh, let's see, FX Master. FX Master? Yeah, and it is going to require um, a library to be added along with it. Don't be, mm -hmm. don't be alarmed if it does. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see... And probably settings extender will will be required as well, but I wouldn't put that one in unless you absolutely need it. Um, okay. okay, yeah, that that's it right there is FX Master. There are other things that enhance FX Master, but I I don't think I picked them up. Uh, Cat, I never did ask you. Are you okay with recording? Absolutely. Okay. Um. Remy, I, I need to... Are okay with swearing during a recording? Well, you know, mm -hmm. um, for the tour game, we try to keep it as family-friendly as possible. For this one, I'm not too worried about it. Um, Remy, did okay. I ask you... Uh, no, sir, I don't remember you giving are... me that question. The, okay, are you okay with voice recording? I've got no problem with that. Okay, all right. I just want to make sure everybody's good. So I, I want to kind of explain to everybody, and I'll explain that. I've already explained this to Jamie. I'm not sure uh, about the rest of you or not, but um, this one shot is specifically to kind of give us a little bit of a break uh, apart from the Aliens game. And uh, Andrew, I am so sorry I didn't get that recorded. I really am. It was so fun. Now my epic joke that I made during that session will be lost in the mists of time. <laughs> Unfortunately, what, what was that joke again? What were we doing? Uh, the you guy that was me. melted from the torso down, y'all told me to check if he had any arms on him, and I said, arms are about all the things this poor bastard's got left. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's, that's definitely good for the Aliens game, and now it's immortalized here. So... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this one shot is designed for a few reasons. One, it's to kind of help give us a break from Torg. Um, two, it's to allow me some extra time to finish at least the first act. Actually, I think I'm done with Act 1. I've got to finish Act 2 um, of a four-act adventure. Um, uh, when, when I'm under stress, I generally work better, so I'll probably get it all done just in time. Um, and then uh, the third thing is to introduce you to the One Ring. Uh, we'll be playing in the first edition background with second edition rules, which are cleaner, better, faster, uh, that sort of stuff. But that also means I'm going to be fighting my knowledge of first edition rules, which were hard enough to get down because I'm so used to, to all of these, uh, you know, roll it, kill it games. So I'm here to help and learn with you. Good. I, I appreciate that, Ross. Because I'm in the same boat where I want to run and play second edition. And, you know, we, we both ran and played first. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Are there any questions from any of you about the game, about the map, about anything um, uh, that is revolving around gaming tonight, please? Not why the sky is blue or, you know, other things. Um, before we kind of get started. So, when it comes to, like, connections that our characters have, both to the other players and to NPCs, how far are we allowed to ad-lib that? Ad lib that on our own, and how far do we have to like ask you about it? You know what? Let's do this. Um, ad lib as you choose, but maybe help make a note that you're ad libbing. Ad libbing maybe in the in the chat or something. Whisper it to me if you want to. Uh, forward slash w space gm, and then whatever your message is, um, and and uh, and I will be more than happy to help you with that. I'm a walking token encyclopedia, so uh, if Paul doesn't know it, I'm probably here. Yeah. Awesome. But, and, and Ross, I'm going to kind of disappoint you a little bit here. Um, I'm not looking for absolute knowledge. I am not looking for perfection. I, I am looking to teach um, if necessary, but I'm looking to have fun more than that. But if, if you've got questions, uh, feel free, whether it's about Tolkien or Middle Earth or, or anything in the game, um, you know, feel free to stop me. Uh, for I, I've already said I'm, I'm learning the game myself, uh, as is Ross, so uh, it, it may be a little bit slow in parts. What is a good Tolkien story without an introduction? So um, this will help kind of kind of get you guys down, centered down to where your characters are meeting for the first time. Um, but before I do that, are there any questions? All right, so getting started. The setting for our game. The One Ring is set in the period between the conclusion of the events narrated in The Hobbit and the culmination of the terrible struggle described in the pages of The Lord of the Rings, The Twilight of the Third Age. Encompassing more than 70 years, this time is ushered in when Bilbo the Hobbit finds the ruling ring and culminates many decades later with the final confrontation between the Free Peoples and the Dark Lord Sauron, and the destruction of the ring. It is an exciting time, offering plenty of opportunities for adventuring in a land witnessing the end of an era. In this volume, the game introduces the dangerous lands known collectively as Wilderland, or some might call it call it Wilderland, and covers the years following the adventures of Bilbo the Hobbit and his companions. This region provides an excellent starting point for players entering Middle-earth for the first time, as recent events have brought the area to the forefront of history. This guide introduces the main rules of the game and is all you need for many hours of adventure in Middle-earth. There are lots of things to do that I never got to do before uh, they stopped producing first edition. Okay. Wilderland. The lands extending from the Misty Mountains as far as the Running River are known as Wilderland. Uh, there are many good reasons for such an ominous name. Not only did the region once host a dragon's lair, but its greater part is occupied by the Forest of Mirkwood, home to giant spiders, orcs, and other dangerous creatures. Nevertheless, Wilderland has changed significantly in recent years. Smaug, the Dragon of Erebor, Bane of the Northern World, has been killed. Many proud folk are reclaiming their lost dominions. To the north rises the Lonely Mountain, a solitary peak that houses an underground stronghold of dwarves of the line of Durin. In the valley below stands Dale, a city of Northmen newly built from its ruins, close to the trading town of Esgroth on the Long Lake, also known as Lake Town. From hidden halls dug under the northern eaves of Mirkwood issue again the hosts of King Thranduil, uh, ruler of the Wood Elves. Near the ford of Karok, on the river Anduin, the Bearnings, a folk of men following the lead of Bearn the Skin Changer, keep their watch, while to the south the settlements of the woodmen are multiplying along the vale of the Great River. Year 2945 of the Third Age. I'm starting a year kind of early, but not a whole year. It's going to be fall. Or nearing fall, the later parts of summer. Nearly five years ago, in the year 2941 of the Third Age, in the reckoning of the elves and the men of the West, a fierce battle shook the roots of Erebor, the Lonely Mountain. Orcs, wild wolves, men, dwarves, and elves clashed under a sky darkened by giant bats, their hatred fueled by ancient quarrels. Many deeds of renown were done that day, and some heroes prevailed while others fell. In the end, delivering a crushing victory against the forces of darkness. 
a new alliance has been uh, was born from the aftermath of that battle. Now remember, it's the Battle of Five Armies. In fact, if it hadn't been for the threat of Bolg's invading host, rallying the free peoples under a single banner, the long years of pretty, uh, petty misunderstandings would have flared into open warfare. The spirits of elves, men, and dwarves were embittered and made miserable by the growing darkness of Mirkwood and the ever-present menace of the great dragon of Erebor, Smaug. Each community had become suspicious of its neighbors and limited their dealings to meager trades. When the den of battle subsided in the Battle of Five Armies, the surviving free peoples looked upon each other with an open heart once again. Now, with the shadow lifted, trade increasing, the late necessity of ensuring roads are open and passable, and ferreting out former agents of the shadow, word has gone from Bard, King of Dale, the bowman whose final arrow slew the dragon Smaug, for uh, folk, particularly Northmen, to come and aid the Dale lands, Erebor, and all the peoples of Rovanion, which is also known as Wilderland, uh, what many prefer to call Wilderland, in reestablishing what once was the trading center of the world. This requires you, adventurer, and folk like you. Welcome to Wilderland. All right, now we start drilling down on, on where you guys are at. The East Anduin Vales. A visitor to this part of the Vales of Anduin would be forgiven for thinking that this land is empty. The land rolls on for hundreds of miles beside the river, endless green valleys running down to the Great River. To the east is the ever-present shadow of the forest like a black stain on the horizon. While few people live here, the land remembers them. There were kingdoms here long ago, and armies watered the soil with their blood. The visitor must clamber over uh, ruined stone walls or perhaps make camp amid the barely visible foundations of some old village. The tumble-down remains of ring forts crown every large hill from the old ford to the undeeps, and elven paths run along the border of Mirkwood for many miles. The woodmen of Mirkwood live in this region, or at least their herds do. Their villages lie deep in the forest, but they keep herds of cattle and sheep in the open dales. Young men and women tend to the herds with the help of dogs and run back to the shelter of the forest when threatened. Uh, I'm going to skip wildlife. Inhabitants. Long ago, Northmen lived in this region. They dwelt in the open and hewed wood from the forest to build their homes. Then orcs and evil men out of Dol Guldur attacked from the south and many wars were fought near the forest eaves. They chose to move into the forest at that time, which back then was not so terrible and tainted as it is today, and became woodmen. They still consider these lands theirs, and when the shadow is finally defeated, they, they may leave their shelter of the forest and settle here once again. The Bayornings. You are, you are actually in the territory of the East Anduin Vales, and the Bayornings are are basically in charge there. The region along the upper portion of the river Anduin was once home to many men, but their number dwindled as the years passed. Only recently, the land around the Karak, a stony river island, has started to see men returning to watch the old ford and the road to the high pass of the Misty Mountains. Though few in number, the Bayorning work hard to protect safe and rapid routes through their lands, as Bayorn and his followers do not trust anyone easily. When Beorn broke his isolation shortly after the Battle of Five Armies, he became a leader of men. His legendary ferocity attracted the mountain hunters and fighters without allegiance, warriors who lost their families or who forsook their clans due to their violent tempers, and needful souls drawn to his protective nature. In time, all kinds of individuals flocked to his side, giving rise to the Beornings. Faithful to the teachings and will of their chieftain, they protect the mountain passes and the road that leaves the forest uh, to cross the river Anduin, watching for every creature on two legs or four that dares defy them. Men, elves, and dwarves still have to earn the trust of this suspicious folk, and often must pay heavy tolls for safe passage across the Beorning's domain. The village of Stonyford. We're getting to it. Here's where you guys are. Stonyford, or Stanford in the language of the Vales, is the southernmost settlement of the Beornings beyond the Old Forest Road. Here, a stone tower once stood and a ford to cross the river. Uh, of the tower, only a pile of stones remain, and the ford has long gone. Hartwolf is the village elder, though his daughter Ava is better recognized for her strength of character and, in essence, is Thane of the village. This is where, at present, you find yourself. Okay, have you guys gone through and read, um, read your... Uh, uh, characters. 
I'm reading it right now, too. Okay, <laughs> so uh, if you read the background on your character, you'll find that it's very similar to uh, to what I posted in the PDF file. But uh, at the same time, um, uh, if you read your notes, it will give you some additional information uh, about your character. Now, the cool thing about the One Ring is that it's mostly about the role playing. Okay, um, you you have skills, you have traits, you have a lot of things that you can do, but they're not an absolute. Uh, you you don't absolutely have to make dice rolls every ten seconds to get things done. Okay. Um, uh, a lot of what you do can be narrative in nature, but when it comes to the more important things, of course, you're going to do dice rolls. Uh, that's what I really like about the game. Okay, uh, let's see. Ewald is being played by whom? I think that's Remy, isn't it? That would be me. Okay, can you unprivate your <laughs> your dice rolls, please? <laughs> All of your dice rolls are private. <laughs> I, I got a public. I was just testing out the system as well. Ah, okay. All right. Yeah, I'm doing self-rolls to test it out. All right. Very cool. Out of everything that I just uh, went over with you guys to kind of drill down on where you're at in, in the uh, game, are there any questions? Or are you pretty much ready to go? I'm in here. Oh. I'm ready whenever you are. Okay. All righty. Okay. The Festival of the Moon is the reason that all of you have come to the village of Stony Ford. You've heard that there are means of of earning a little bit of of treasure to put into your pocket so that you can clink around. Uh, in this particular instance, you could earn as much as three treasure. Uh, by simply by participating in a game. Now, why would you be asked to participate? Because there is a an implement known as the sickle of the moon, uh, and the sickle is is has been helping people with their crops, the, helping Bjornings with their crops uh, for the last few years since the Battle of Five Armies, since people flocked to Bjorn. Uh, they saw him using the sickle of the moon in his fields, and somehow they magically grew. Okay, and then normally ground has to lie fallow, or it has to um, it has to regenerate somehow over a year or two years, a season or two seasons, in order for it to regain the nutrients it needs to be able to grow things again. Well, it was noticed that Bayorn was able to do this every single year. He was able to grow wonderful crops every single year. So his his people asked if they might be able to borrow the sickle. And um, he basically helped to set up a series of trials to determine what family would be better suited or best suited to having the sickle uh, for the course of the year. Okay, um, and this happens every year uh, for the last three years. This is actually the third year that it's taking place, uh, and the the Bayornings, the many there are many warriors among the Bayornings, but there are always more support folks, if you will, for the warriors. So for every warrior out there, there's probably five to seven people that support them, okay? Uh, we're talking blacksmiths and tinkers and uh, farmers and ranchers and, you know, just, just all kinds of things like that to help out. And uh, uh, so the, the families, the support people are not necessarily the most hardy of folks like the warriors are. And the warriors have no interest in doing this because they're being supported by the folks at home. So uh, uh, this is this is the third year, and word has gone out uh, to all you know all all sorts of places now that adventurers were requested to come and act as champions for these individual families. This is uh, I, I'm just going to kind of, of, of take an active role here and say this is what all of you have come for. 
okay, to be able to participate in these things. Um, the uh, on arriving in Stonyford, the centerpiece of the festival is a stage constructed to hold uh, a, a few of the the events. What they're calling what what you've heard people in town call trials uh, uh, on that stage. Um, and of course, the winners of each of the seven events uh, are to be, uh, you know, announced toward the end. And then the overall winner uh, is found in uh, uh, is is found to to get the sickle. Now, in order to to earn the you know any extra pay or anything like that the the one who wins the sickle turns it over to the farming family that needs the sickle and then they pay now they have plenty of treasure to go around of their own okay that they make through making trades with dale and uh and uh Erebor, uh with the long lake with the various woodman towns that are in the local area, uh, and of course, uh, Bayorn uh, pays for some of their work, especially if they cannot, for whatever reason, figure out um, uh, uh, enough people to sell to, if you will. Question? Or somebody just smacking their gums? Uh, uh, so, uh, since my character's background, she comes from a farming family, would she be able to, like, fight on her own family's behalf in this? Um, you know, uh, is she from, uh, what is your character's name again? There's, there's, uh, there's Jamie. Duoda. Hello. Hello. Duoda. Duoda. Okay, let me look. Yep, Duoda of Stonyford. As a matter of fact, you could. Um, Okay. Uh, let me work with Jamie for Sorry, just a, a little bit. Stake in this. What, what's that, Jamie? Sorry, it took me a little bit. No, 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 you're busy. You're fine. Uh, we just got done right. kind of with the introduction. Uh, I'll be sharing the introduction plus some additional information that goes into that journal file uh, a little bit later. Uh, let me answer uh, uh, Kat real quick. Yes, Duota can... Uh, uh, do this stuff for her family, um, but she she is also a hunter. Um, so you know this is kind of taking a break from her normal hunting duties. Okay, that that she does. Um, I would have to go back and reread everything that I wrote. I've got it right next to me, but uh, I'm I'm trying not to take too much time. All right, um, Jamie. Um, hey. First off, welcome. Um, Thank you. Uh, second off, you should be able to pop into the game uh, just by clicking on that top link in the uh, in the One Ring Two E uh, chat, um, and you're going to come in as Eggle, or uh, as as Cat likes to say it, Agile. Agile. I don't know if you like that or not. Uh, I think it's really cool personally. So. Give me a second, and I'll and I'll do that. Okay. All right, and we'll we'll I'll, I'll kind of back up and and tell you why you're here and everything like that. Uh, uh, in the village of Stony Ford, uh, for the last uh, this is the third year that it's been going on. Farming families uh, who are bay um, uh basically go through several trials to. Uh, get a hold of a more or less magical uh, farming implement to help them grow their crops better. Okay, and and Bayorn, the skin changer, um, uh, asked for them to to do like a series of trials each year to figure out which family would get it. Well, the families have reached out and have. Uh, uh, asked for various adventurers uh, to come in and um, uh, and uh, uh, do these trials for them for which they can earn some money. So that's why everybody is here. Uh, Duota is Kat's character and um, uh, uh, is going to be participating for the sake of her own family. 
So when you get in, we're going to uh, kind of run over some character sheet things real quick. Uh, and you'll want to read your uh, character background and notes. Fair enough? Uh oh, Jamie? You talking to me? Yeah, I've been talking to you for five minutes. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I was taking an order. Oh, so you are at work. Okay, I'm, I'm still not, at work. Yeah. I, I'm not going to go over that again. You're just going to have to figure it out. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow, um, I get off at three, mm -hmm. so um, I'll look, I'll um, I'll look at everything that uh, was done on. Uh, um, uh, I won't have I, this. I but, won't have this uploaded for some time. I know, but I'll just look inside the game. Okay. All right. Okay. You so, can trust me on that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Noreen, um, how much honor do you have? Oh, I didn't say I was going to take it. <laughs> said, oh, wait a minute. Isn't Noreen a, uh, or Noreen a, uh, scholar? Yeah, I'm a scholar. Yes, okay. Yeah. You know what, that, that makes a whole lot more sense now. I have not memorized everything. Um, Okay, who was that that was just trying to speak? Uh, that was me. I was going to like, yes, he's a scholar. Uh, you know, I was reading, reading the character. I wanted to be him. So. Yeah, oh, well, I, I, I've got all of the stats and stuff for what people chose, and everybody liked Noreen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it was kind of silly, but um, all right. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. Okay, surrounding the stage are a number of stalls where both locals and strangers sell food, drink, and goods to the attendees. And and there are quite a few people here. There's probably, what, two dozen people from the village itself, and then probably another dozen, dozen and a half from around the area. And the only, but the only adventurers that are actually there are you guys and uh, Bjarnor. Uh, Bjarnor is there, but he is is uh, apparently not going to participate this time. Uh, let's see. There are houses Herman, in the vi huh? How many dwarves are here other than myself? Uh, you know, I I've got to be honest with you. For where the location is, it's only you. Oh, all right. And you are something of a curiosity to some of the Bayornings, especially the Bayorning children. Um, well, I did. I didn't come with uh, Luthwin, who is an elf. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Yes, that's. Hey Ross, may I interrupt real fast? Uh, uh, what's up? Hey, um, I'm gonna have to. Um, it's starting to get busy again, so I'm gonna go and uh, yeah. get out. Come back later. Copy that. All right. Okay, so, yeah. Ross, you're not wrong. You did come in with Luthwin and uh, Egil, uh, e mm -hmm. Egil. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, and we'll have to we'll have to hit uh, Jamie up about that name later uh, because he was apparently distracted. I told him not to do it. I told him, but he doesn't listen to me. I'm just Uncle. Um, so. But it, yeah, they're definitely you know for for Luthwin. And for you in particular, and for Walford, to to be honest, uh, oh, Hobbit, yeah, yeah, yeah right. and he's the only Hobbit oh. in town. So, yeah, uh, there's there are probably two more two more elves uh, in here, but they they don't seem like they're terribly interested in uh, Luthwin. Uh, and they are almost in open disdain over Norrin. Yeah. And the Hobbit, they I just have it. no clue what to make of. I play with them, too. Just for, <laughs> just, just, to, just to, you know. Just for the sake of doing it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm going uh, to stop. Me in, hmm? uh, I find me a place to hit some good beer or ale. And 
Oh yeah, yeah, that's easy. Um, I, I I'm not even going to worry about uh, charging guys money or anything like that. Um, your, let's just say that your, um, your money is sufficient. Your standard of living is sufficient here. Uh, it's it's all about having a good time and enjoying this festival because it is late in the summer uh, and getting ready to turn to autumn. Um, so don't worry about money or anything like that tonight um, in particular. Maybe if we get deeper into the game, we will. But the way that they've rewritten Treasure for, for second edition, I really like it. So uh, let's see. Okay, let's go ahead and, and kind of run over character sheets real quick. And then I'll, I'll, I'll work with some more uh, in the way of, of uh, describing what's going on with you guys. So if, if everybody would open their, their character sheet um, and uh, let me know kind of when you're there. Duota? I've already got I'm one there. open. Okay. So, okay. Well, let's go one at a time. Duota, um, I think that's Ginger. Uh, no, oh, I'm Radigan. Cat. Radigan. Oh, Duota is cat. Okay, I, I I have the the names not matched with the names in here. So, <laughs> um, okay, so Duota's in Ewald. Ewald, Iwald. Okay, uh, Luthwin. Luthwin. I'm gonna. You're gonna make me look this up. You're gonna make me look this up, aren't you? Uh, let's see, uh, Luth, oh, great, the name changed. <laughs> I didn't write down who was who. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me fix that. Uh, I thought it was Chris that was across. I thought it was Connor uh, that was Luthwin. I'm Luthwin, yes. Oh, okay. Oh, so you, you just wanted to make me wait. I see how it is. So, uh, let's see. <laughs> All right. Let me write these down. Duota <laughs> is done by Catalia. Uh, let's see. Um, let me get back in here. Uh, Yuuld is Remy. Or Remy is Yuuld. Uh, Luthwin is Connor. Norin is Ross. Radigund is Ginger. If I have it written down, it's just easier. And then Walford is Andrew. Or, you know, vice versa on the, all those. Okay, now I've got that set. I should have written it down. I knew I was supposed to write it down today and I forgot. Okay, so I've got Bjarnor's sheet open. If the rest of you would just kind of open uh, open your character, we'll, we'll uh, go down. Uh, the biography, it should be pretty easy to understand. Um, your age, uh, it, it's nothing that's really important enough tonight to worry about. Your culture should tell you where you come from. Like Bjarnor is a baroning of the Middle Vales. Uh, you've got a cultural blessing there uh, toward the right, and that can uh, that can be very important. Okay, like for Bjarner, uh, his cultural blessing is furious. If he's wounded, he gets to ignore wary effects during a fight. So if he's if he's wary um, and becomes wounded, he all of a sudden loses the wary problem. Um, the rest of you, we can we can discuss how your cultural blessing goes. Uh, it can help you at any time, so don't be afraid of of, of dealing with that. Um, calling, uh, your your calling is uh, basically why you're out on the road. For instance, if you're a scholar, you're looking for uh, new artifacts like uh, Norin is doing, uh, or new music, or new poetry, or histories, or s something like that. A messenger is somebody who uh, travels all over the place and generally ends up sharing their news. The sharing of the news is kind of a secondary issue. Uh, being a champion, uh, you're, you're just a really good fighter. Okay, uh, being a warden is you're watching over the villages of the free peoples. Um, uh, the free peoples are your elves, dwarves, uh, hobbits, and humans. 
um, uh, a treasure hunter uh, is just exactly what the name means. And then a captain is going to be like, uh, for those of you who have seen the Lord of the Rings, uh, Captain Faramir, or in this particular instance, you could also count um, uh, Aragorn as a captain. Okay, uh, your calling does help define your character, so that's kind of important. Uh, let's skip down to attributes a little bit. We'll, if if we get deeper into the game, we'll worry about shadow path later. <clears throat> all right, attributes. You've got strength, heart, and wits. That's it. And all of the common skills that are lined up below those belong to that particular attribute. Um, now, the, the bigger box for each of your attributes is your base target number, okay? Uh, this is what you have to roll over to be able to succeed. Now, the dice in this game start with a feet die, which is a 12-sided dice, and then a number of six-sided dice or success dice equal to the number of ranks you have in your skill or in your um, uh, valor or wisdom uh, scores. So... Uh, Bjarner has an awe common skill score of three ranks. So if I were to roll that uh, on a tabletop, it would be 1d12 plus 3d6. The d12, the feet die, is rolled for everything in this game. Okay, So say you have no ranks in song, you can still roll a d12, and you can still automatically succeed if you roll what's known as a Gandalf's rune, which is the 12 on that dice. Um, for the success dice, those are six-sided dice. If you roll a six, that's known as a Tangwar rune, and it is an extra success. In second edition, they have really flared out how those work, and I really love it, and we're going to experience that a little bit. All right, uh, distinctive features. In second edition, characters only get two distinctive features. Uh, well, technically, in first edition, they only get two distinctive features also, but they also get three specialties. I don't know why the specialties were removed for second edition, and I don't care because I like the specialties. Now, your specialties are something that you can do in the world that you're really good at that is special to your character. Okay, um, Distinctive features kind of help define your character. So for, uh, for Bjarner... He is generous and he is hardy. Okay. Now, if you click on the name of any of those distinctive features, it will give you a description. Okay, of what it does, and it's usually a very simple description. Now, distinctive features and specialties are known as traits. Traits can be used at various points in the game. If you think a trait that you have on your character would be useful in a particular situation, and I will attempt to help you guys pick those out, but if I don't, just kind of keep them in mind for yourself. Um, a trait can help you uh, gain a, a, a dice on a skill roll. It can help you uh, with uh, various types of success. It can get you an extra uh, adventure point, uh, etc. So uh, your distinctive features, don't overlook them. They're important. Mm -hmm. Now, in first edition, everybody uh, skip down a little bit to rewards and virtues. In first edition, um, you either get valor at two or um, uh, wisdom at two, and the other one at one. Okay, and then whichever one that you have at your second rank, you get a reward or a virtue for. The reward is for valor. The virtue is for wisdom. Um, in this game, in 2nd edition, they've eliminated that so that you start with one Wisdom and one Valor, and you get one each Reward and Virtue off the cuff, straight away. Okay, so for, like Bjarner, he has keen, his, his Great Spear is a keen weapon. Sharp or better balanced, this weapon is now more likely to produce a piercing blow when hitting its target. Attack rolls made with a keen weapon score a piercing blow, also on a result of 9, 10, or a Gandalf's rune on the feet die, okay? And and we'll go over that as we're going along. I may pop open your character sheet and read so that we can we can do things. Now that's his reward. He he's got a great spear that really helps him out. Question? Okay. I'm sure we'll figure it out. Um, 
the uh, and then there's another one in virtues you can go through and pop open each by clicking on the name I've typed in all of the information for these uh, and and you can deal with that uh, as you wish uh, and and I will deal with it as well so that I can kind of help you through the game uh, resources uh, if you skip down a little bit more you've got endurance load hope and shadow um, your endurance is like your hit points. You've got a maximum number of hit points and a current number of hit points. As you take hits, you will reduce your endurance uh, to to deal with that. If you get to zero endurance, you fall unconscious, uh, but are not necessarily going to die within an hour. Okay. Um, if you have a wound and you go to zero endurance, uh, you're going to die within an hour unless you get help. Um, somebody makes a health uh, uh, a um, uh, uh huh. One of those checks, a first aid check. Um, your load healing right next to that. Probably. I'm sorry. Healing, probably. Healing. There you go. Thank you. It slipped my brain for some reason. Okay. Load to the right of endurance is how much your character is carrying encumbrance wise. Uh, if your load uh, and your fatigue switch places, then you've got a problem. Okay. Um, uh, because that makes you weary. So if, say, your fatigue goes to goes above one point or more above your load, you become weary, which means a one, two, and three on each of your success dice does not count for anything, though a four, five, and six still counts. I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, your hope. This is a very important part of the game. It's a part of in-game currency that will help you through certain things you can spend hope typically to gain one dice on a test okay uh, uh, there are certain restrictions to that uh, in your skills if you scroll back up to your skills you'll notice that four of your skills are underlined okay you can spend a hope to increase one of those four skills by one dice temporarily okay and that will help you out hmm uh-huh. Juice. Got it. Okay. Uh, shadow, you should have all zeros in the shadow right now. Uh, shadow comes when you do nasty things in the game because your game <laughs> is, is based on the free people are the good guys. They're like a shining yeah. example of how everybody's supposed to be. But if, say, you killed another, uh, another free people... Um, even if they're kind of on the bad side of things, you can gain shadow from that. Um, say yeah. you enter a dark area. I'm not talking dark as in no light. I'm talking dark as in evil. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and you fail a particular role, you can gain shadow from that. Yeah. Uh, there's temporary shadow, and then there are shadow scars. Uh, when you get a certain number of temporary shadow... Um, I have to read up on that again. It's not relevant tonight. It's not going to be relevant tonight. But um, if you get enough temporary shadow, uh, you can actually hurt yourself uh, and start walking a bad path. Okay. You, you don't. You don't want shadow. Right. Because you don't want to fall and become an NPC. Exactly. Okay. Now. You will not be able to come back. <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay, skip down to combat proficiencies and combat. Uh, let's deal with combat proficiencies first. You've only got five, but only four are anything that you can do anything about. Okay, you've got axes, swords, spears, and bows. Um, everybody go ahead and click on one of those. Well, I have a question okay. for you. Sure, what's up? I have a man, and a man is supposed to be like a villain with him. Yes, uh, I know. I have, I have skill and ashes and swords. So which one do you want me to use? Um, the yeah. Matic is going to be closest to swords, but I just read something in 2nd edition where it says Matic, uh, daggers, uh, and things like that are supposed to fall under brawling. Now, I, yes. I thoroughly disagree with that. Um, so I want you to go ahead and use swords for the Matic. Um, so nobody clicked. Uh -huh. Nobody clicked on I one did. Of, of those four. Yeah, I did. I don't I have did. any did rolls here. Roll? Yeah. I. Uh, oh, okay. oh yeah, it opens up the uh, the dialogue box. Just go ahead and hit roll or yeah. whatever. Ooh, that's an ugly dice. 
Um, and then for the green dice, for whatever reason, it's not showing what it's supposed to show. Ooh, what happened to my screen here? Uh, Wait, how do we make our dice uh, colorful? Delay. How do I get the pretty dice? Okay, scroll well, to the... At the top of the uh, dialogue, if you're into the uh, dialogue box, you know the one with the two uh, chat log? At the very top, you have the option of my dice settings. I just scrolled Ooh. through the dice settings until I found something I liked. <laughs> wow, what happened here? That is super, super weird. Break it? No. All of us failed. No, it's yeah, all of us rolled a one. What? Oh what? wait, no, never mind, never mind. Sorry. I, huh? uh, I saw. Okay, three, four, five, six. Yeah, roll six failure. Okay. Now, when you go to attack in this game, uh, in in the VTT. The virtual tabletop that you're in, you have to target a uh, you have to target somebody first. Now to target somebody, you're going to double right click on on their character. I don't have anybody for you to double double right click on right now, so don't worry too much about that. But uh, you'll you'll be all right. All of you have an idea about how dice work in the game. So apart from combat proficiencies, uh, look over at the combat section. Your parry is what the your opponent has to roll over, sometimes with additional penalties or, or making it easier on them um, uh, before they can hit you, okay? If they roll a 10 uh, or a an Eye of Sauron, uh, they can do a piercing blow on you, okay? Now, if you go over to the title armor, you'll see that it lights up. Okay, and you can click on that to to open up a dialog box and get an armor check. Okay, so very very simple. Now this was a great success, uh, and and that you know that mean I rolled a sixteen. That means that I probably beat the the piercing blow value that uh, that uh, I was going to have to put up with. Okay. Otherwise, uh, if you take a piercing blow, you are wounded. Okay. And oh, if you take a piercing blow and you fail, your uh, your pierce roll, your armor roll, you will take uh, a wound. You can only take one wound, um, uh, and mark it on your sheet. Okay. Otherwise, you'll take a uh, uh, if once you take a second wound. And or your endurance is lowered to zero. You're you're pretty you're pretty much done. You're going to be dead within an hour. Um, okay, scroll down to war gear just a little bit. We're almost done, and we'll get into the story. Uh, the war gear is is what you have. It's the only thing that counts for load. Okay, uh, Norin, you're going to notice that you are wearing um some pretty heavy armor and the load rating is cut in half on that that's because you have the redoubtable yeah, yeah you have the redoubtable cultural uh blessing so you're yeah yep that's the truth um now if you'll notice in your war gear the equipped column only has one thing checked in it each you can only have one weapon equipped at a time, okay? Now, if you go to do like a dual attack, a dual wield, uh, we can take that into account at that time. But there is no rule for it in in this uh, game system, uh, uh, in this online game system. Okay, they haven't built it yet. Okay, scroll down almost to the bottom. Equipment, uh, equipment, gear. Uh, if you go to make your own characters for this game later, you'll have equipment and you can do load for it and everything like that. Uh, below that, below that, you're going to have fellowship, skill points, adventure points, and treasure. Your treasure is basically the money that you're carrying around. One point of treasure equals one, one piece of gold, okay? Um, and we can get into exchange rates and stuff like that at another time. Um, I'd like to know why that's doing that. All the images are broken. It's weird. Um, 
Below that, you have Background, Company, Fellowship, Phase, Tale of Years, and Notes. The only two that have anything in them right now are Background and Notes. Uh, I had uh, all of you look at your background earlier, uh, and I asked you to pop open your notes so that you could see some extra things. It tells you about the languages you speak. Everybody speaks Western, which is the common tongue. And then Bayornings will speak like the Vale of Anduin tongue. Uh, uh, who is it? It's... Um, who is my Luthwin? Uh, you're going to speak Grey Elven and some Sindarin as or no, Grey Elven is Sindarin. You'll also speak some uh, some Wood Elf uh, tongue. So that's good for you. But everybody speaks Western. Uh, your Shadow Path is also described down there. I went ahead and put it in so that you could read it. Uh, if you get enough Shadow Points and and uh, uh, you gain a, a Shadow Scar. Uh, your uh, shadow path starts to come into play at that point, and you can go crazy. No, this is not Cthulhu. <laughs> um, Andrew, I can barely hear you.